Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. So greatly appreciate it. Truly, truly is. Okay, before we get started, let me give you my usual disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only. Please do not take what I say as fact. Please always do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Next, if you have not liked, subscribed, or commented yet, please consider doing so. It really helps me out and I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so we are doing true crime at Christmas time, day seven. This. I know that I've said, like, as I'm doing these and researching them, they're getting progressively worse. And I mean that. But I'm going to tell you in advance. If you kind of watch my videos, maybe click off halfway through, I appreciate you anyway for being here. Please don't leave me on this one. Because this is the craziest, wildest twist and turn. You're going to be like, jaw on the floor, what the... What? I promise you. Promise, promise, promise you. I'd never lie to you. Stick with me on this one because you're going to be like, what? It's crazy. Okay. So, today we're talking 24-year-old Gianni Belvedere. His fiance, 22-year-old Ayana Flint. And his brother, 22-year-old Salvatore Belvedere. Ilana Flint was born on March 21st, 1991 in Russia. And they and her family came over to the United States when she was seven years old. After graduating from Walden High School in Provo, Utah, she began classes at Grossmont Community College in El Cajun, California in 2012. She loved studying psychology, nature, music, and playing the piano. In 2013, Ilana was working at Kathy Jean Shoes for Women inside of the Mission Valley Westgate Mall in San Diego, California. Her fiancé, Gianni Belvedere, was trying to get a new business off the ground. The idea began as a family business and family members were working with Gianni to get La Primavera up and running. The idea began as a family business and family members were working with Gianni to get La Primavera up and running. The idea behind it would be to sell classic Italian dishes and gluten-free Italian dishes. And then at the time of his death, La Primavera was actually selling sauces and tomato soup to in Costco's. Gianni and Ilana were both from Utah. They had been dating for eight years, and when the Belvedere family up and moved to San Diego, California, she followed. December 24th, 2013. After Ilana gets out of work that night, she's unable to reach Gianni, who's supposed to be picking her up. So she calls the Belvedere home, and Salvatore answers. She tells him what's going on. So he says, okay, and... Oh, I guess I should preface this by saying the three of them were very, very close. So she calls Sal, tell, tells him what's going on, tells him that she can't find his brother. He jumps into his father's car and he drives down to the Macy's parking lot to pick her up and to try and find out where Gianni is. From there, they begin to call all of Gianni's friends, family members, nearby hospitals and jails for any kind of answers. At 1.15 a.m., 911 gets a call from Ilana screaming and telling the operator that she had been shot. When officers arrived, they found Ilana deceased with a to the head. Sal was also in the head, but was still alive. He was transferred to a nearby hospital. December 27th, 2013, Salvatore would tragically succumb to his injuries in the hospital. So now officers have two people dead and one person missing. The Belvedere family go on TV and they beg for answers into the death of Sal and Ilana and for answers to the whereabouts of Gianni. Because at this point, Gianni is their main suspect. Because it kind of looks like he killed his brother and his fiance, and then he took off. 
That's not what happened. Oops. Spoiler. That's not what happened. Okay. That's not even kind of what happened. I feel like that wouldn't be as twisted. I, I guess twisted as that sounds, that would be less twisted than what happened here. I'm not kidding you. It's insanity. December 28th, 2013. A candlelight vigil is held for Ilana Flint at La Jolla Shores. During the vigil, friends described her as a loyal friend and a hard worker. January 1st, 2014, a visual is held for Salvatore Belvedere at Crystal Pier in Pacific Beach at sunset. The family chose this location because it was one of Sal's favorite places to surf. Sad. January 17th, 2014, at approximately 11.45 a.m., a passerby in a parking lot in Riverside, California, phones police to report a foul odor coming from the trunk of a green Toyota Camry with Utah license plates. When officers arrive and open the trunk, they find the decomposing body of Gianni Belvedere. Although... This would not be confirmed until January 23rd, 2014, just because it was so badly decomposed at that point that they had to make sure. So they weren't sure until the 23rd of January, but it was him. And it was his car. So I'm thinking they probably knew. February 7th, 2014. Police would confirm that Gianni died from a, to the head, just like the other ones. Just like his brother, his brother, and his fiance. Oh God, these people. This family. June 21st, 2014. Police confirm that they have arrested and charged 29-year-old Carlo Galapa Mercado with the death of Gianni, Salvatore, and Ilana. They went on to say that Mercado was in no way linked to the three and that this case was literally a case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time, not once, but twice. Just wait, just wait, not once, but twice. Okay. Carlo Mercado initially pled not guilty, and his defense team would even try to push the narrative. And I'm going to put the clip in because literally, if I didn't watch the clip, I don't know that I would have believed what this person was telling me. But he originally pled not guilty. And his defense team would try to push the narrative that Gianni, his brother and his fiance, then he drove his car 90 miles away to where the car was found, parked the car, parked the car, unalived himself, then had somebody else put him in the trunk of his own car. He would later change his plea to guilty after taking a plea deal to take the death penalty off the table. And I think that's probably best, Mr. Mercado. Although, I don't know that I would be upset to if they just went ahead and fried you for what you've done. If I'm being honest, I don't know that I'd be upset if you got fried for it. I just don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so... The timeline of events goes as follows. Buckle up. <sighs> December 28th, 2014. 
December 22nd, 2013. Mercado purchases PVC adapters, reducer, insulated bushings, and liquid electrical tape on his credit card. These items would later be used by Mercado to make a DIY silencer. The same DIY silencer that was used on all three victims. December 23rd, 2013. Ilana Flint was working holiday hours at her mall job. And phone records would show that Gianni arrived at the Macy's parking lot at 11.30 p.m. to wait for his fiance to be finished with work. At 10.23 p.m., Carlo Mercado arrived at the Macy's parking lot with a 22 caliber Ruger with his homemade silencer in his backpack. He ended up crashing his motorcycle and rendering it inoperable. So he decides to place it in a parking spot at the mall. While waiting for Ilana, Gianni makes a call to his cousin and work manager because remember, it's like a family business thing going on. Mario Donato. At 11.43 p.m., the call is abruptly ended and the line goes dead. Mario immediately tries to call Gianni back, but the phone goes straight to voicemail and it stopped communicating after that. When he spoke to police, he told them that he did not hear a scuffle or a prior to the call drop. That's the one thing I'll say. In this call and in the 911 call, you never hear the shot. So his DIY silencer, I guess it worked. But then why wouldn't you just take your skills and go do something good with it, you fucking idiot? <sighs> Maybe you just could have made some money and, you know, earned a decent living. Because obviously you could put stuff together. Fucking idiots. Anyway. So. What they believe happened is that. Oh my god. Okay. So. Mercado crashes his motorcycle. It's not working. He, wa he sees Gianni in the parking lot on the phone waiting for his fiance. He walks up to the driver's side window. And he. In the left side of his head. From there, he pushes Gianni over to the passenger seat of his car. He gets in the driver's seat and drives towards his home in Mira Mesa, California, while Gianni bled out on the passenger side door. Okay? At 12.12 a.m., Ilana get, leaves her job at the mall. She goes into the parking lot. She can't find her fiancé. She's with her co-workers also. So she phones the Belvedere home. Sal picks up the phone. She tells him what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. I told you this. He gets in the car. He goes over to the mall parking lot. From 12.12 to 1.11 a.m., phone records show that Ilana called Gianni's cell phone repeatedly, called hospitals, called jails, looking for any sort of answers of her fiance's whereabouts. While this is going on, Mercado was driving Gianni and Gianni's car back towards his neighborhood. His credit card shows that he purchased $14 worth of gas and then headed back towards the mall parking lot to retrieve his broken down motorcycle. Okay? His credit card records would also prove that he filled his motorcycle with gas earlier that day. So it would not have required another $14 worth of gas. This leads me to believe, and I'm, they have not seen this. They may have said it. I have not seen it. I think he had the intentions of setting Gianni, the car, probably both on fire at some point to just get rid of everything. Get rid of the evidence. 
Cell phone records indicate that he arrived back at the mall at 12.57 a.m. Okay. Here we go. Court records lead me to believe that Salvatore and Ilana must have brought attention to themselves that this person, so either they spotted the car or, and they were like waving the car down, or they spotted somebody else driving Gianni's car. Regardless, he caught on to the fact that they knew that the person that owned that vehicle. And they knew that he was not the person that owned that vehicle. Okay, why do I say this? When Mercado pulled up in Gianni's car, Ilana was on her cell phone with 911 with her back like hiding that she was on the phone with 911. Well, you wouldn't be doing that if your fiance pulled up in your fiance's car. So she knew that it was her fiance's car, but not her fiance. So she's on the phone with 911. Hiding that she's on the phone with 911. As she's on the phone with them, he walks up to the car without, not even without any, not even a verbal warning, nothing. Just shoot Salvatore right between the eyes. Done. What? What? Can you? Imagine. Just, tr just done. He then, Ilana, once in the back of the head and then a second time in the back of the head. Sorry. Then he shot Ilana once in the back and a second time in the back of the head. The last words she was able to get out before she passed were, Hi, I'm at the West Mission Valley. Ow, 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 ow. I think I've been at the Mission Valley Westfield Mall. No other words were spoken after that. that those were her last words. After the two, Mercado reached into the vehicle and stole Salvatore's cell phone and the keys from the ignition. He then got back into Gianni's car, with Gianni still in the car next to him, and drove off at 1.20 a.m. At 1.24 a.m., San Diego police arrived at the scene where the mall employees were all standing around. At 1.36 a.m., Ilana was pronounced dead at the scene. Officers documented and photographed Mercado's black motorcycle that was parked approximately 100 feet away from the victim's car because it was one of the only vehicles there, one of the only other vehicles there. So they photographed it, obviously. He didn't think of that, though. At 2.16 a.m., Mercado is seen on surveillance camera attempting to withdraw $500 from an ATM machine from an account that only had a $47 balance. By 4 o'clock a.m., he had missed his shift at Target in Mira Mesa and refused to answer any and all calls from his co-workers inquiring about his whereabouts. I guess that makes sense. What are you going to say? Cell phone records indicate that he hid out in Orange County, California until the crime scene was cleared. Sometime between 10.50 and 11.32 a.m., while still hiding out, Mercado made three web searches on his cell phone. One that said, quote, Mall San Diego. Another that said Mission Valley Mall. He then opened the calendar app on his phone and wrote 
R.I.P. on December 24th, 2013. At 11.30 a.m., after not seeing any news reports that linked him or his motorcycle to the crime, he returned back to the mall in Gianni's car to retrieve his motorcycle. Oh, if you're wondering, yes, Gianni was still with him. Yeah, still with him. He arrived at the mall at 1.30 by then, the scene was cleared and officers were on the hunt for Gianni because they think he did this. Because it would make more sense. <laughs> like, wouldn't it make more sense that something happened, he snapped and took them out and then ran as opposed to this happening? Like, this is... <sighs> At 2.21 p.m., he drove to a neighborhood by his home used black duct tape to a to adhere a stolen license plate over Gianni's Utah plates, took a photo of the cross streets with his cell phone, and walked to a U-Haul dealer. He put, I mean, okay, so in case you didn't get, pick up on that, he put the stolen California plates over the Utah plates because obviously they're looking for Somebody with Utah plate, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. At 2.40 p.m., credit card records indicate that he rented a U-Haul pickup truck with a motorcycle trailer within one mile of where Gianni's car was parked. December 25th, 2013. Carlos staged a fake motorcycle accident in an attempt to hide Evidence that may link him to a crime and to get rid of the motorcycle. He used his cell phone to take an unusually large amount of pictures of the damaged motorcycle lying next to the U-Haul truck that he rented the day before. At 12.54 p.m., he filed an insurance claim with Geico, which he stated that on December 25th, 2013, at 9 o'clock a.m., he writes, I was stopped at a light preparing to make a right turn. I began turning into the furthest left lane when a small animal ran across the street in front of me. I swerved to the right to avoid it and that's when the bike straps came undone and it fell out of the trailer. When asked the cause of why he was towing the motorcycle in the first place, he told them that it was due to a dead battery. The insurance adjuster noted that he doubted that the motorcycle fell off the trailer, stating that in his experience and training, he believed the damage was more consistent with laying the motorcycle down while traveling at a high rate of speed. Nevertheless, Geico told the motorcycle and paid Mercado $2,539 to get the hell out of their life. And they told the motorcycle. At 10.42 p.m., he texted his boss at Target, writing, quote, I can't. Merry Christmas, Dora. So I hate to tell you this, but I won't be able to come into work tomorrow. I just got into a little bike accident Monday afternoon. Car ran a red light to turn and hit me. I'm fine, just bruises and sore all over. So I'm towing my bike to another shop so my insurance guy can look at it since the tow truck driver dropped it off at a place that doesn't do motorcycle collision inspection, end quote. Hmm. Why wouldn't you just keep the same story? Right? Like, why wouldn't you just keep the same story? Why would you make up two different stories, you jackass? <sighs> January 11th, 2014. Mercado drove Gianni's car with his 
decomposing body in the trunk, to look at numerous cars that he found on Craigslist. Yes. He did. Yes, he did. He drove around in Gianni's car with Gianni in the trunk with his $2,000 or $2,500. What was it? Wait, I'll tell you in a minute what it was. With his $2,539 check from Geico, okay, he's driving around, checking out, going to people's houses on Craigslist that are selling their cars. Oh, my God. So, January 11th, 2014, he drove Gianni's car with Gianni in the trunk. Around. One seller that he met with noted that when Mercado walked up to his house, there was no other car with him. So that led him to believe that either he parked it somewhere else or that somebody had dropped him off. He did not end up purchasing that car. Okay. After leaving that seller's home, He's seen on CCTV in a McDonald's drive through all while Gianni's body is still in the trunk of the car. Oh, my God. He would then purchase a bunch of Arm & Hammer baking powder and Febreze cans to help mask the smell of decomposition. And he used black duct tape to hold down the trigger on the Febreze. Okay. From there, he drove Gianni and his car to the parking lot of a Jack in the Box, where he would later be found when the lady calls. He removed the false plates that he used to cover the Utah plates, covered the blood in the passenger seat with a towel, and took off. He walked about a mile to another seller's home that he found on Craigslist, purchased her Ford Explorer, and went about his life as if nothing happened, as if he did not just destroy probably hundreds of lives, and rob three young people of their life. Just like just like nothing happened. Like you never did it. We're not done. Just when you thought he, this couldn't get crazier. Wait. Buckle up. I'm telling you. Buckle up. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Not this time. I'm forcing you to stay with me. Don't leave me this time. January 17th, 2014, Gianni and his car are found. Carlo's DNA is found on the duct tape hole that he used to hold down the trigger to the Febreze, the false plate that was used to cover the Utah license plates, and the gas cap of the car. January 18th, 2014, the literal day after Gianni and his car are found. Mercado was stopped at an unrelated random checkpoint by Border Patrol. She was trying to flee. But luckily, I don't, be it them, be it whatever, they stopped him. Because had he made it over the border, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It is. It's a wrap. So he gets randomly stopped. They have no idea what's going on. They randomly stop him because that's what they do. And he would later be arrested at Border Patrol after they found an AR-15, a 45 semi-automatic handgun, and a homemade silencer. Unaware of what he had just done and his connection to the three people, Border Patrol releases him, but they hold on to the weapons. This is key. This is key. They don't even know it. This is key. April 29th, 2014. 
Carlo Mercado is arrested in California for possession of the AR-15, carrying a concealed weapon in a vehicle, and for being in possession of a homemade silencer. These charges were based on his January checkpoint arrest. Okay? So, how did officers put two and two together? Okay. That would be because following his release from Border Patrol, Mercado would call the Department of Justice numerous times asking them to release his guns. Of course, he did that because they could link him to the murders. But it also begs the question, if he just shut up, would they have ever seriously looked into these weapons? Or would they just... There was no link. This was literally, it was completely random. So, I wonder, would they have ever put two and two together? I don't know. The world may never know. May 7th, 2014. San Diego District Attorney's Office files charges for numerous felony violations. I can't. I can't with this. I can't with this. This is the guns. May 7th is about the guns and the border. Oh, I'm shaking the table. Because I'm getting like crazy. Because this is just, it's insane. I'm telling you, it's insanity. May 7th, San Diego District Attorney's Office files charges for numerous felony violations. This is all still Border Patrol. Okay? <laughs> June 4th, 2014, Mercado pleads guilty. For the Border Patrol. Because of this, his DNA is collected and it's submitted into CODIS database. June 18, 2014. San Diego Police Department are notified from CODIS that the DNA sample submitted for Carlo Mercado matched the DNA found on the Febreze can, the duct tape, the false plates, and the gas cap. Ain't that some shit? Bye, sucker. June 21st, 2014. Mercado is arrested and he charged with the murders of Gianni, Salvatore, and Ilana. Which is all that truly matters in the end. This roller coaster ride. June 24th, 2014. Mercado was taken to. Oh. Yeah. This fucker. June 24th, 2014, Mercado was taken to the psychiatric hospital after an alleged Tylenol dose. He would then spend the next 14 months in the psych ward talking to different doctors and nurses before finally realizing that this man is very competent to stand trial. There's actually like a big part in the court papers about this, but I... I don't care. I, I don't know if you care. You can look it up. It, it doesn't matter to me because it's all bullshit anyway. It was literally him just playing more games and not letting this family just put like, come on, man. After all you've done, now you're going to play crazy for 14 months? Break. I didn't want to deal with it. But it's, there, it's in court papers if you want to look it up, I guess. And it's... He's competent anyway. Of course he's competent. Look at all the shit he did. You cannot be crazy and take all those steps to cover shit up. And be, it, it doesn't work like that. The steps that he took alone shows that he is very, very capable to stand trial. Period. In the end, like I said before, he took the plea deal to take death off the table and he was sentenced to three life sentences. Like I said before, I don't know that I'd be upset if they fried him. I, I don't. I'm sorry if you guys are against that. A lot of times I am against it because I just, I think it's the easy way out. But this one, man, he's, oh, 
just never stopped. Anyway, if you're still here, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so, so, so very much. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know that you stayed to the end. And leave me a, a Christmas emoji if you want. So I know that you stayed to the end and you're a true G. <laughs> so I know that you stayed to the end. Let me know what you thought. Like, did I have your mouth on the floor? That's what I truly want to know. Like, was your mouth on the ground with this one? Because mine was. It was insane. Until next time, stay safe out there.